So we've come across to Dampier. So this is not to be confused with the Dampier Peninsula. This is just an area called Dampier, which is near Caratha. Yep. And we're here to see the Red Dog Memorial. Yep, we've already seen the, what, the grave? Yep. So now that's the more memorial. Yep. So let's have a look. Here he is, a Red Dog. A complete history of Red Dog can be viewed at the Caratha Public Library. Mementos are on display at Caratha Veterinary Hospital. Red Dog, the Pilbara Wanderer, died, no died November 21st, 1979, erected by the many friends made during his travels. Oh, pretty good job, eh? Yeah. Well, it's not red, but... So we've driven down near the water at Dampier, and oh my god, this place is freaking beautiful. You could have driven up here. Oh. And See? The tracks and control on. See, that's why I told you. Look at that little that. island over there with palm trees, John. Look at that. Is that an island? Because it goes right up, I don't know. Right up to there. I think it joins up to the mainland. But have a go. At the... Watch Ooh. yourself. Have a go at the ships. Oh, dusty. And in the distance, if you can see that white, that is the Dampier salt. Couldn't help himself. Yourself, could you? you didn't even have to put it in four wheel drive. And I wasn't prepared. I Two wheel drive. I didn't think you were going to do it, so I didn't tape most of it. Do we do it again? We just drove past this boat ramp and I said to John, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. But I don't have the best photography skills, but it's a gorgeous view from this boat ramp. And then in the distance, you can see the salt um, hills, I suppose you call them. All right, we're at the Dampier Salt Lookout. Okay. We're going to have a look, and I think it. Oh, I'll put your little doobie on, John. Um, I think it's just a lookout to to look at the salt flats. It looks like it out there, but we'll go have a look anyway. You don't realise how much salt they make, do you? You don't. We're I'm... at up at the other place. Where was the other place? Um, where Jess and Dan were? Port Headland. Yeah, they had heaps of salt there, and now we're here, and, and there's the, heaps of yeah, salt again. Yeah. And I didn't. Salt. I still don't understand how the salt comes in and in the water and it absorbs and then the salt's left and I don't get it. I wish there was a site, some sort of tour where we could do. Hmm. You know. Yeah, anyway. Let's have a look. I'd say the salt, the water just evaporates and leaves the salt behind. I would say. It's a long way up.
Wow. So much salt. So you can see the water in there. See it flowing? Where? I'm moving. I've got some information, John, but yep. I have to keep looking at the board, okay? Yep. You ready for this one? Yeah. Did yep. you know I'm always ready. it takes 18 to 24 months to produce salt from seawater? Wow, no, that did not. That is a long time. And John, ready for the next bit? It takes 65 tonnes of seawater to produce one tonne of salt. Wow. That's a lot of seawater. So, well, you can see out there. Wow. That's awesome. So on the other side of the road as well, it seems to be everywhere. Over there. It's a very dusty place. I'm going to go through the, the um, salt process, salt production process, right? So seawater is pumped into the first pond, which is called Pond Zero, and flows through a series of primary ponds. Energy from the sun and the wind, which is evaporation, concentrates the water to help encourage salt growth. In the primary ponds, the brine near salting point. At this stage, it has been reduced to 11% of its original volume. You would swear a cyclone's coming. You'd swear. <laughs> Brine is moved into crystallising ponds where high quality chemical grade salt is grown there. To prevent other impurities such as magnesium, potassium and bromine precipitating with the salt, the brine is removed as bitorns, which is magnesium makes it taste better. Eh. While there is still 25% of the original sodium chloride left in the brine. Step three, approximately 25 centimetres of salt is deposited in each crystallizer each year in our operations. And this is the preferred depth for harvest. Custom built harvesters pick up the salt and load it into triple trailer haul trucks ready for transport to the wash plant. They must rust a lot. Yeah. Step four, the wash plant removes any solid impurities such as wind blown dust and gypsum and rinses off any remaining soluble impurities such as magnesium and potassium. When our product is dry enough, it is taken to the port by conveyor ready for shiploading. And then step five, our salt is then stockpiled and shipped out to many different parts of the world. Although Dampier Salt's product is used in food production and de-icing roads, it is predominantly used in producing chemicals for construction, automotive and electronic industries. This is my last whinge about flies for the time, but I want someone to put it in the comments below if you know about flies. Yeah. Right? I think mine's linked because it's got a red dot on it. Mm. Anyway. All right. Oh, so if no, one, so if, if no one's heard me, it's because I've got a little red dot on there. I don't think it's linked, but anyway. So what we want to know, we're in, the, I think the wind speed now is up to 40 kilometres an hour. It's a lot. Yet flies, are still strong enough to be all over us. How? They have strong little wings. Who knows about flies? If you know about flies, give us some education. Comment below. Give us some education about flies. Yeah. Oops. All right, let's go find something else to look at. Some more flies? Yeah. Okay, John. Okay, Tracy. What do you reckon of this beautiful area? Beautiful, looks good. stunning. Looks great, isn't it? Yeah. What if I told you that we are at an Amor... I haven't told John what we're doing. We've just come up, what do you reckon, one kilometre of dirt rocky road? Yeah. Um, and what if I told you this was the memorial site of a massacre? Of who? Aboriginal people. Well, white people killed Aboriginals. Mm -hmm. Really? Just here? 
-hmm. So let's go have a look at the plaque. Are you going to come out? I don't want to come out with that, but I'll come out. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. It's pretty have fun, a look. It's, it's not nice, that's for sure. But look at the, um, the view. That's a beautiful place and it's the site of a massacre. It's awful, isn't it? Okay, on this, the plaque here, I'll read it. And then I'll read what I've found out, okay? It says, hereabouts in February 1868, a party of settlers from Roborn shot and killed as many as 60 Yaparara people in response to the killing of a of one European policeman in Nicola, Nickel Bay. This incident has been cut known as the Flying Foam Massacre. It's terrible. Right. So I'll just show everyone the view. So the Flying Foam Massacre is one of Australia's most brutal massacres of Aboriginal people. On the order of the state government's resident, Robert Scholl, police and white settlers, get this, right? Police and white settlers were given permission to kill as many Aboriginal person as retaliation for the police officer who was speared by the Yapurara people. That's horrible. So one police officer, I don't condone that, but they were told to kill as many Aboriginal yeah, people the as Aboriginals they wanted. Yeah, wouldn't have understood either, I don't reckon, what was going on. Probably not, but really, this, this is Yeah, no, awful. horrible. I've just seen another sign, it says registered Aboriginal site. It says, you are on or near an Aboriginal site. Please respect the importance and significance of this site to the Aboriginal people and to the cultural heritage of Western Australia. All those rocks look like they've been stuck up for a reason. You it does. More? Yeah, I can see. I wouldn't imagine you can go up there. Oh, you wouldn't go up there anyway, no. just for respect. That's horrible. Horrible. Never knew about that at school, hey? Not good. Alright. Okay, we're back down at Dampier and we just come to look at their foreshore. Very pretty old grass. Oh. <laughs> look, look, John. What? No red dirt. I know. What a difference. I never ever thought I'd say that about grass. How nice is that? Love it. I don't want to go too far, I've got no hat. No, okay, we'll just have a look up to those stairs maybe. Okay, we've stopped in at the Hampton Harbour Boat and Sailing Club for some lunch. We're just going to share a lunch today because one, it's quite expensive. Well, it is for us. It's $32 for a fish and chips. Um, but when we're kind of not really that hungry. Um, but also, you've got to remember, we were supposed to be free camping this whole trip. We weren't, the expense of paying for caravan parks weren't in the equation. That's why we say buying lunch is expensive. Um, but it's just been so hot, we have been staying in caravan parks, so all our money has been going towards that. 
Remember how I said um, we're going to share a fish and chips? Well, I'm kind of glad we only chose one. $32 doesn't seem too bad. Now remember, we don't have salad on these. Chips are nice. They're really good. Are they? All right. I would have been able to do that by myself. It's two pieces of big, like big pieces of fish. Yeah. Look at all the shells. Yeah, 